Welcome back. Hugh, good morning. Great to be with you. I have had uh, open lines this morning, Senator, except for your colleagues, Marsha Blackburn and Rick Scott. I've had 84 callers, 82 of them support the Senate confirming the president's nominee before the election. Will that happen? I believe it will. Uh, I'm very glad the president is going to make a nomination this week. That's the right thing to do. And I believe it is critical that the Senate take up and confirm that nomination before Election Day. It appears we have the votes. And I think by the time we vote, I'm confident we'll have the votes. Now, Senator, I have uh, heard yes on Sunday George Stephanopoulos suggest to Nancy Pelosi that the Senate Uh, be presented with rigged impeachment articles in order to invoke the Constitution's uh, requirement. You take those up immediately. If the House moves to do such a radical thing, would you move for the immediate uh, confirmation of the nominee? I I think we're going to confirm the nominee no matter what what antics Nancy Pelosi pulls. Uh, If they try to impeach the president, as you and I know, the Constitution sets out the standards for impeachment. Impeachment lies when the president has committed high crimes or misdemeanors. It is not complicated that nominating a Supreme Court justice does not constitute high crimes or misdemeanors. Nancy Pelosi knows that. Chuck Schumer knows that. They're simply angry and exercising political rage. And this is the same rage that has burned on the far left since Election Day 2016. And they're mad at the American people how dare you elect Donald Trump president? They're mad at, mad at the American people for electing Senate Republican majorities in 2014, 2016, 2018. And, and this is one of many ways their, their anger is burning. We're also seeing riots in the streets. It's all the same rage that's playing out. Last night, Don Lemon gave voice to that rage on CNN. I want to play a clip for you, Senator Cruz, of Don Lemon speaking for Democrats last night, cut 33. Everybody sticks to the We're going to have team. to blow up the entire system. And you know what we're going to have to do? No, I don't know about You know that. what we're going to Yes, yeah. we, we, we have to do? You just got to vote. Honestly, from what your closing argument is, you're going to have to get rid of the Electoral College. Because the people... I don't see it. Uh, because the, the minority in this country decides who the judges are and they decide who the president is. is but that, you need a is constitutional amendment to do that. And if Democrats, if Joe Biden wins, Democrats can stack the courts and they can do that amendment and they can get it passed. Well, you that's need two-thirds a, a vote in the Congress and three-quarters of the state legislature. They may be able to do that. Uh, Senator Cruz, Don Lemon's never going to win the spelling bee, but he accurately reflects the Democratic rage you're talking about. Well, and you know what I think is striking is, is his use of pronouns. He said multiple times, we, we, we. Last time I checked, Don Lemon is theoretically a journalist, but he's not hiding who he is. He is a left-wing partisan activist. And when he says we, he wants the Democrats to win, and he spends every moment he's on TV fighting not just the Democrats. He wants AOC. He wants Bernie Sanders. He wants the angry, crazy left to prevail. And, and CNN makes it, yeah, puts them on air, I think, every day to, to, to push that, that, that partisan position. Now, Senator, he proposed stacking the courts. Now, that doesn't actually require a constitutional amendment. You know that. I know that. They, yep. The Constitution, uh, the court's been at nine since 1869, but it could be moved. However, that would be so fundamentally destabilizing of the republic. That would mean no man is safe because the courts could be changed to fit whatever the mood of the country Do you believe Democrats understand how radical that proposal is? I I don't think they care. And and, and one thing to to, to note, so they're talking about it quite a bit now because of this vacancy. But the Democrats plan to pack the court regardless. If Joe Biden wins and they get majorities in the House and Senate, the Democrats are going to pack the court. And, and, And it has nothing to do with this vacancy. They have let the crazy left drive their party. Their party is dominated by AOC and Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. They've been very naked that they intend to try to do. You remember FDR tried to pack the court. He tried to take it from nine justices to 15. And and even his own party, the Democrats, said, "Okay, that's too much. We're not going to do this. The difference is, Hugh, I don't believe there is a single senator, not one, uh, on the Democratic side who would stop their efforts to pack the court. That was true before this vacancy. They are radical and they are angry, and, and, and it raises the stakes for this election. Now, Senator Cruz, let's talk a little bit about politics. If, as some of your caucus have said, the vote should be postponed until after the election, I believe Republicans will get wiped 
out. And I don't mean just the senators who are running. Even someone like Lindsey Graham from a solid red state, I think he would lose. I think every Republican running would lose, and I think we'd lose even more in the House if the Senate delayed. Do you agree with my political assessment? I, I, I do. I think it would be a staggeringly bad idea to delay the vote. I think it is critical that we vote before Election Day. You're right politically. Uh, but, but, but let me also make a broader point for the good of the country, which is that Joe Biden has been explicit that he intends to challenge the legitimacy of this election if he doesn't win on Election Day. He's hired a team of lawyers headed by experienced Supreme Court litigators. They are going to challenge this case. 20 years ago in Bush versus Gore, we saw that in one state, Florida. I was part of the legal team representing George W. Bush. We went to the U.S. Supreme Court twice. If we don't fill this vacancy, if the Supreme Court simply has eight justices, then there's a very real possibility that the court will deadlock 4-4. And as you know, a deadlocked court 4-4 cannot decide anything. In Bush versus Gore, we had 36 days of chaos and uncertainty. If the Democrats succeed in delaying this election or if feckless Republicans delay the the confirmation vote, the consequence could well be a constitutional crisis with the election results dragging on for weeks and months with utter chaos. The country's too divided to allow that to happen. I I, I think that would be a, a gross disservice to the nation. Now, Senator Cruz, the president has been pretty obvious about the five people on his list. It's Judge Amy Coney Barrett. It's Judge uh, Barbara Lagoa. It's Judge Joan Larson. It is Judge Allison Rushing. And it is uh, Deputy White House Counsel Kate Todd. Do you have a favorite among those five? You know, I've heard good things about all of them. I, I, I don't know most of the judges on that list. I don't know personally. And so I'm keeping an open mind. They have good reputations. What, what I have urged the president to do is nominate the strongest proven conservative, someone with an actual record of standing for constitutional uh, principles and being vilified, paying the price. You know, as, as you know, Hugh, I've got a new book that's coming out a week from today. It's, in t- it's called One Vote Away, How a Single Supreme Court Seat Can Change History. And the entire book is on the Supreme Court. It talks about exactly the question you just asked. What is the philosophy we should follow to pick Supreme Court justices and get it right? And every chapter of the book talks about a different constitutional liberty. So one chapter talks about free speech, another talks about religious liberty, another talks about the Second Amendment, another talks about Bush versus Gore and elections in democracy. And each of the chapters tells war stories. Um, Many of the landmark cases in each of these areas, I personally litigated, argued before the court. And so it tells the inside story of what's really going on, how our fundamental rights are hanging in the balance, how we are one vote away from losing our our fundamental rights under the Bill of Rights. That, that, That book, Uh, will be available a week from today, but it's on pre-order on Amazon and anywhere else you get your books. And so particularly right now in this fight, I would encourage your leaders to to go and order the book One Vote Away to really understand what's at stake uh, in in a way that I think is both both readable and and interesting, even if you're not a lawyer, to understand what really is is the battle is over. That is so timely. I hope you spend time. I'm going to write my next Washington Post column on the Fifth Amendment's property rights takings clause because people don't understand the court has abandoned property rights. They do not protect property owners, little tiny farmers, little tiny home developers. They do not protect them anymore. The court could change back to protecting property rights. Well, and Hugh, as you know, one of the the landmark decisions that unfortunately went went the wrong way is a case called Kelo versus New London. Yes. Kelo versus New London was a 5-4 decision where the Supreme Court said the city of New London, Connecticut, could condemn a woman's house, take a woman's house for her. It's a house that had been in the family for 100 years, and the city forcibly took it from her in order to give it to a private corporation. It was Pfizer that wanted to build a parking lot. So the city came in, took her home, and said, you know what, we like the big rich company more, so we're gonna give it to them for their parking lot. And the issue was, so the Fifth Amendment allows the taking of of private property, but only for public use. So they could have done it if they were building a road or a bridge or something that was for public use. The issue there was, can the government officials be the henchmen for the rich and powerful corporations? Sadly, 
the Supreme Court concluded 5-4 that it could. That was a huge blow to property rights, but it's another example of how we're just one vote away from protecting all of our property rights and not favoring uh, the, the rich and powerful and those with political connections in, in city councils. I, I, I couldn't I can't wait to read your book. Let me close by talking about the, the hearing. Senator Cruz, you saw how Brett Kavanaugh was savaged by the left. Will the committee protect whomever the nominee is? Unlike what happened to Kavanaugh, just shut it down if that begins. Well, I think we will work to ensure that the confirmation hearing is fair, but but we're not. But the Democrats are going to make a circus of it. They are going to be, unfortunately, I think this is going to be worse than the Kavanaugh hearing. I don't know if they will get as personal and ugly if they have any credible hook. I am certain they will, but but I'm very concerned that we're going to see anger and violence and and Democrats right now are losing their minds because the court is critical to how they enforce power on the American people. You know, their ideas are not popular. Their ideas, when the voters have a choice on their ideas, the voters usually choose against their radical ideas, taking away the guns from Americans and taking away the Second Amendment. That's not a popular position, but but the Democrats want five unelected justices just to mandate it. And, and so their their rage will spill out. I'm very concerned that, that that in the next two months coming up to the election and after the election, that we're going to see increased violence because you've got journalists and you've got left wing activists and Democrats all encouraging. Well, good luck in, in standing firm, Senator Cruz, and protecting the nominee. I, I, I last quick question. You don't think they'll stoop to attacking someone's religion, do you? That's that's prohibited explicitly in the Constitution. Um, if the nominee is Amy Coney, uh, Coney Barrett, who's one of the one of the nominees, and she's a federal court of appeals judge who is Catholic, uh, the answer in terms of whether they will attack her religion is a hundred percent yes. And the reason we know that is they've already done that. They've already attacked her religion when she was up for confirmation. Senator Feinstein said the dogma lives large in her, and by dogma she she meant she actually has has faith. And, and that, for a lot of Democrats, is deemed a disqualifying factor, that, it, that if you are a person of faith, they don't believe you should serve in, in public life. And so I think there's a good chance we will see religious persecution as an element of the circus, and who knows what else the Democrats are going to try to throw please, up. Please remind your out. colleagues, it is prohibited, by, uh, religious test is prohibited by the Constitution. Senator Cruz, always good to talk to you. Come back when the book is out. One vote away, pre-order it at Amazon now, and we will be talking to Senator Cruz a lot in the weeks ahead, I hope.